Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired software engineer from Microsoft, going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that wasn't even imagined back when I was writing operating systems, crypto mining. And we're going to do it on hard drives. What? That's right. The mining we're going to learn how to do today does not require a 3090 RTX GPU or a Threadripper processor or any of the things you've come to expect from crypto mining, because it uses your hard drive instead. The creator of BitTorrent has created a new coin of the realm. That means it's your chance to get it on the ground floor of a new cryptocurrency using nothing more than maybe an SSD and a fat external disk. Prices for SSDs are already on the rise as a result, so stay tuned as I show you everything you need to go from zero to hero mining Chia coins on your hard drive, and you can get started in about 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm guessing you already have a vague sense of at least what a crypto coin is, but if not, let me try to explain it in my own quaint little Dave PL way. If your brain works anything like mine, maybe this time it'll make more sense. If I'm good, maybe I'll even understand the blockchain at least a little bit. A piece of paper currency has one main thing going for it. You can verify that it's authentic just by looking at it and holding it in your hands. Before we switched from the gold standard, a serialized paper $100 banknote meant that there was $100 in gold sitting in Fort Knox that was attributed to that very $100 bill. Every US dollar was so backed until 1971 when we switched to being a fiat currency. That means that you believe that a $100 bill is worth $100 because you believe in the United States and you trust its banking system when it says it's worth $100. No matter what you believe about its inherent value, you can at least verify that the bill is authentic because they are incredibly hard to counterfeit convincingly. No one can simply make more of them. People trust US currency and US banks and that's why the dollars have value. A crypto coin makes similar guarantees but through different means, but you can still verify that it's totally authentic and unique. Let's say cryptocurrency went old school and printed up paper notes. Each bill would have its very own serial number, just a very long one. Now imagine there's a big ledger at the central bank and it lists that this serial number was first minted or printed back on, let's say, December 1st, 2020. It was then deposited into the bank by me, Dave Plummer, at some known time along with the mathematical proof of its authenticity. More importantly, however, every time that coin is spent or otherwise changes hands, it didn't happen unless there's an entry in that master ledger. Not only is the coin simply known by virtue of its serial number to be official because its entire history is known, it's also authentic, which can be verified mathematically. Simple possession of the currency means nothing. The ledger is what determines whose it is, who is rich and who is poor. To verify that a crypto coin is valid, you just check the math. What that math is and how hard it is to do and how long it takes varies with the type of coin. Let's say we create a very simple new crypto coin called the Prime Coin. To mine a Prime Coin, all you have to do is discover a new Prime number. If you find it, it's yours, and it goes in the ledger under your account as the original owner. It starts out pretty easy. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and so on. The problem with primes is that they get further and further apart, but still appear randomly and without any pattern. As they get bigger and bigger, it takes longer and longer to find new ones because large numbers are so hard to factor. And when someone declares that they have found a new prime number, somebody still has to check all the possible factors to make sure there are none. And that also takes time. To verify who really owns it at any point in time, you check that big central ledger of every transaction that's ever happened. First you owned it, and then you bought a pizza from someone and they owned it. And then the pizza store paid the bakery for dough and on down through history. It's all right there in the master ledger. This master ledger sounds a little too magical, and unfortunately, it's a bit too good to be true. For one thing, if there was only one copy of this ledger, it would be lost or destroyed. Worse, it could be corrupted, and you'd always be subject to trusting whatever organization was entrusted with the ledger, unless you kept your own copy of ledgers too. And that is precisely what happens with the blockchain. The blockchain is nothing more than the enormous ledger in which all the transactions for that type of coin across all of time are recorded. Imagine it as a database in which every coin had an entry for every time it changed hands. The anonymous IDs of the buyer and seller would be recorded alongside, and the whole thing is cryptographically secure. Better yet, each entry in the ledger depends on the one before it, which makes the entire thing tamper-proof. Imagine a simple Excel sheet with the rows numbered. Each row takes the row number of the last row and then just adds one to it. Missing or added rows would become obvious. That's a trivial computation, but you can imagine one that is cryptographically secure in such a way that nobody can come back and insert or remove lines from the blockchain later because each line depends mathematically on the one before it. 
Once it's recorded in the blockchain, it's permanent, an unalterable part of the history of everything that happens after it. It's not just you that keeps your own copy of the blockchain ledger. It's everyone. If you want to mine coins or spend them in transactions, you have to play the game which is to keep a copy of the secure blockchain ledger. You also have to provide some amount of computational power to verify the validity of new transactions. When a new transaction happens anywhere in the world, it's validated mathematically and then recorded in the blockchain held by everyone. So in summary then, what you really have are coins that are just solutions to hard math problems like finding ever larger prime numbers. The prime numbers become the coins, and the blockchain is a secure ledger that records not only who discovered each prime number and who the current owner is, but also the entire history of every transaction that every coin has ever been a part of. Now clearly, they're not recording your name in the blockchain, no one would want that kind of privacy problem. Instead, it's really the anonymous digital ID of your wallet that's recorded. I look at it as your wallet owns the coins and you control the wallet. That wallet ID might be the public key from a key pair where you hold the secret private key. Only with that private key stored in your wallet would you, or anyone, be able to spend or transfer any coin that you own in the ledger. That's great and super secure. In fact, it even makes it impossible to outright steal coins. But what if you lost your wallet thereby making it impossible to prove that the coins are yours? Then they're gone. There is no recourse. No one can ever get them back or spend them. There are many, many sad stories of people losing their original digital wallets, most likely from formatting the drive they were stored on or scrapping the computer or something. One particularly sad story involves a fellow who had a significant number of bitcoins controlled by a wallet that he stored on an external hard drive. The drive was discarded some years ago and in the meantime, the value of those bitcoins has grown to what became a small fortune today. He's currently negotiating with the city where he lives to tear up the town dump and do a manual search for the remains of his hard drive. At one time, years ago, I was fairly active in the crypto mining space, including Bitcoin, starting in the early days of CPU mining and GPU mining going up on through the ASIC phase. In the winters, I'd let my S3 miners help heat my shop and then generally let them go idle over the summer. I have a little stash of Bitcoin that I mined on my own back in the day, but it's been a long time since any hardware I owned was relevant and viable for mining. Until I heard about Chia, that is. There's a perfectly good reason why cryptocurrency is often tied to complex mathematics. It's what prevents forgery. The math to fight a coin is normally much, much harder than the math to verify a coin, but even the verification step requires a certain amount of computational work. Updating the blockchain requires processing. Nobody wants to do all that work for free, they of course want to be credited with the work. So the cryptocurrency network pays a fee for doing the housekeeping work. While a PC is busy mining new blocks, it will also be fed other newly discovered blocks to verify the math and check the work. To get credit for work, a computer must provide a proof of work, which is really just a confirmation that you've actually done your homework in a way. Let's say that as a proof of work task, I want you to sum up all the prime numbers under 1 million. If I know the answer and you don't, or I know an easy way to verify the answer, the only way you can solve it is to find all those primes and add them up. There's no shortcut to actually doing the work. When you provide me the answer, if the answer checks out, then I know you've done the actual work. It's a proof of work and I can then pay you for having done that work. There's one downside to all this work. It's based on computation time. It guarantees that your CPU or GPU has done a certain amount of processing. That work produces a lot of heat. Worldwide, some blockchains now consume more electricity than certain smaller nations. It also requires that you have some cutting edge hardware. For some types of currency, a GPU will suffice, but for something like Bitcoin, it's so competitive that you're going to need a box that's packed full of ASIC chips whose job it is to sit around and do large hashes that Bitcoin requires. A dedicated ASIC box could be hundreds or thousands of times faster than a CPU, but that's all it does, compute hashes and make heat. If you want to be competitive, you're going to need access to free cooling and some cheap electricity at a minimum. Had you gotten in early, things would be different, but the way mining algorithms work, the more keys are found, the harder they are to find going forward, and lots of Bitcoins have already been found. It's really far too late for recreational Bitcoin mining because it wasn't foreseen that specialized ASICs would vastly outperform the computers that regular people actually own. It sort of took the fun out of it, at least for that coin. The good news, however, is that the guy who came up with BitTorrent has come up with a new proof of work based not on time, but on space. Instead of requiring tons of electrical processing to do crypto work, it requires tons of hard disk space. Instead of megabytes of RAM for solving something, we're talking potentially terabytes of space for what is known as a digital farm. That currency is known as Chia. And no, I can't help but think of Chia Pets too. Ch -ch -ch -chia. Well, I don't know why the name is Chia, but hey, it is. The barrier to entry is low. Anyone with a hard drive can play and getting started is simple. 
The reality is, however, that you'll want an SSD for doing the work and a big hard drive for storing the results. The way it works is you seed a plot on a fast temporary drive and then once it's ready, you move that plot to a large drive to sit and farm it. Seeding the plot initially takes a ton of disk I.O., but once that plot is seeded, you move it out to the slow farm drive where all it really does is take up space and get verified that it's still there occasionally. It takes a lot of disk resources to seed the plot, but very few resources other than space to maintain the farm. To get started, all you need is the Chia application. The miner and wallet and everything else need to be built into one GUI. To get started, point your browser at the website chia.net and when you get there, click on the Microsoft Windows or Mac OS link as appropriate. When you have the setup program downloaded, run it and complete the install as you would any other application. When done, run the application. On Windows, you will be asked to allow it through the firewall, and you should say yes to private networks. The first time you run the program, you will need to create a wallet if you've never done so before. This is where you will store your private key, and that key is in the form of 24 English words. You absolutely, positively must write them down in the exact order shown, numbered as indicated. If you lose this key, you could lose access to your wallet and any currency owned by it, and no amount of digging through the town dump will save you. I took a screenshot and printed it out, and I suggest you do at least the same. Once you've created a wallet, it will be opened, and you'll be taken to the main GUI. Your computer is considered a node in the Chia network, and just like the Bitcoin blockchain, you need to sync up the ledger before you can do any kind of transactions or verifications. You can verify that your node is connected in the node status window, as well as how far along it is with syncing the ledger. Mine completed overnight, but it does take at least several hours. In the connection section, you can see your links to other Chia peers. It's important that you get connected to at least one other full node so that you can sync the blockchain ledger down to your computer. In theory, this should all just work thanks to the magic of UPnP, but just in case you are unable to get it to connect, here's my advice. Go to your router and forward port 8444 directly to your computer's IP address. Verify that the port is open from the outside and it should all work fine. It worked for me anyway. To get started mining, which is properly called farming, you need to seed a plot. To do this, click on the plots icon and then click add a plot. We'll start with two plots and let it know how much RAM to use. Stick with the defaults for now and less than until you can establish that it actually improves your performance if you do change things. So far as I can tell, two is just the optimal number for number of threads. Next up, you'll need to provide a temporary folder and a final output folder. The temporary folder should be on a fast SSD and the output folder should be a big old hard drive of spinning rust. The only thing you're going to do with it is take up space, and a lot of people like to use it as an external. One huge caveat if you're farming. Turn off your PC's sleep and hibernate functions and all that. The software just won't work right if your PC goes to sleep, I'm told. I don't know if that means it just doesn't do work when it's asleep, or if it actually complicates the results or invalidates things, but either way, disable sleep while farming. Once you're done, you'll see that you have a couple of new plots that show their status as plotting. After perhaps a few hours, they will move to the farming stage. At that point, you can sit back and watch the fat, fat gravy train pull into the station because it's time to drink from the deep monetary fire hose that is Chia Farming. Wait, that brings up an interesting question. How do you get paid? Yeah, well, right now you don't. The best you can do right now is to accumulate coins in your wallet for when the currency opens up for actual trading in the future. So it's entirely possible that it might amount all to naught, but it could also mean effectively that you're stockpiling coins against a future IPO of sorts. Could you imagine having a few dozen bitcoins rolling around in your digital wallet because you got in early? I can't predict the future any better than you can, and I have no idea what will actually become of the Chia currency. But if it does well, suffice to say, I will be ready. There's one other factor to consider too, and the math and the projections are beyond the scope of this video, but that is that hard drives do wear out. Hard drives are mechanical devices with mechanical parts that wear and tear, and SSDs have definite numbers of write cycles before they too get worn out. That lifespan varies wildly by the type of SSD technology, but you do need to account for it. Just like Bitcoin miners must consume electricity, in theory, Chia mining will consume storage devices until one exists with unlimited lifespan. Too bad my Optane 905P keeps ejecting itself under heavy load. What's up with that? Does anybody know? This little installation and getting started guide is just the tip of the iceberg, and I'll be honest, I find the GUI a little flaky. I can't cover it all in this video, but let me know in the comments section if you want a follow-up video covering the various command line tools and options. If there were sufficient interest, I could also delve into using the command line and running it under Linux, optimizing farming speeds, and so on. Let me know in the comments where your interests are relative to disk space mining so that I know. 
Better yet, if you enjoyed this episode, please do subscribe to the channel. I gauge a topic's success by two major metrics. The watch time of existing subscribers and how many new subscribers a video brings in. If I see a burst of new subscribers, then I know I've made a video that resonates with people and I will make more like it. If you turn on the bell icon, you'll even get notified of them when I do, so it'd be a win-win. If you enjoyed this episode and yet somehow you're still not subscribed to my channel, then you have no idea the kinds of awesome sauce that you're missing, so click the button right now. Ring the bell too, and if I don't live up to your lofty expectations, you can always undo it later. But you can't unremember not to forget when you don't do it now. I believe that's called Pascal's Wager, wherein he proved that your safest bet is to simply subscribe to Dave's Garage. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Ring the bell too, and if I don't live up to your lofty expectations... Wow, it doesn't even sound like English. Spound like English, let alone sound like it. <laughs>